Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. It's finally time to learn how to play MS-DOS games on your Miu Mini using the DOSBox Pure emulator. This video is the culmination of a huge amount of time and testing. There was a lot to learn and figure out, and partly because this platform can be a bit of a pain to work with. That said, with the right expectations and a willingness to tinker, there are some great DOS games that you can enjoy on your Miu Mini. I have been working on this video for ages, trying to find the right balance between it being overly simple and an endless rabbit hole where we tinker with millions of settings per game. The end result is actually more more toward the simple side, because actually the majority of games I've tested work more or less out of the box, save for a few configurations that you will need here and there, which you'll see what I mean a bit later in the video. With that said, please let me know in the comments if you find specific issues with specific games, and we'll see if a further exploration of DOS is needed in a follow-up video or not. As I said, most games I've tried work pretty well out of the box, but the Miu Mini really isn't the best DOS emulator device ever. You can generally expect compatibility to get pretty flaky around 1990 and especially with 3D games, they barely work to be honest. Also, the lack of USB peripherals make games that use a full mouse and keyboard pretty difficult to play, although not impossible, as you'll see later on. Alright, there's only one way to move forward with this, and that is to begin the video. As usual, you'll need to have your SD card running Onion OS for this tutorial. First, let's install the DOSBox console. On your Miu Mini, head to Apps, then the Onion Installer, and find the MS-DOS system. Press A to activate it, then press Start to return to the main menu. MS-DOS will now appear in the console list. Unlike a normal game console, DOSBox is actually an emulator from Microsoft's command line operating system MS-DOS. And believe me, there really isn't one single way for a DOS game to work. Each game may require different graphics drivers, sound drivers, control layouts, input methods, and more. Thankfully, the emulator DOSBox Pure should take care of most of the heavy lifting for us, leaving our task mostly to fall to launching the game and mapping additional controls. To begin with, I'm going to show you a game which happens to be a best case scenario, Jazz Jack Rabbit. First, let's download the game. Browse to dosgames.com. I really like this website because it makes it easy to find freeware games and demos. On the top right, I'm just going to search for Jazz Jack Rabbit and download the Holiday Hair 1994 version, just because it's easy. You can see the big green download button here, which will download the game itself. Underneath that is a very helpful message, run jazz.exe to play. I'll show you what that means in a second. Copy the downloaded .zip file onto the DOS folder within your SD card's ROMs folder, then reinsert it and power it on your mini. Refresh your ROMs and enter the DOS system. Now when we select Jazz Jack Rabbit, which we just added, you'll be greeted by the DOSBox start menu. This menu displays a list of files in the zip file. Move the cursor with the d-pad and choose a file with A. Remember that the website said to run jazz.exe. So let's select this file and well hey, the game boots right up. I called this an ideal scenario game because all the controls work right off the bat with no extra configuration needed. This is thanks to an automatic key map that DOSBox has loaded for the game. As you can see, the game works just great. If you want to see the control configuration, we can do so using the RetroArch menu. Press Function and select to bring it up, then go to Controls, then Port 1 Controls. You can see on the first item that it is using the Jazz Jack Rabbit keymap file, and you can see the control layout beneath. Alright, exit the game with Function, then re-enter it. Because we know which file to launch for this game, we can easily highlight it, then press right on the D-pad to set it to Auto Start. Enter the game and quit once, and from now on it will launch that file every time you click on it from the game list. All Alright, so that's the basics of adding and running a DOS game. Now, for part 2 of this video, what if your game has a funky control setup or it doesn't map automatically? Well, the first thing you need to do is set your expectations. A game that requires more keys than the Mindy's 14 buttons probably isn't going to be very playable. The key is to tinker with the options and see if you can come up with a satisfactory control scheme. Here's a game called Abuse. It's a side-scrolling shooter where you use the keyboard to move and the mouse to aim. You might think this would be impossible to play on the Mini, but let's see if we can get creative and make it work. First, we'll need to figure out what the controls are for this particular game. You can do an internet search and see if you can find anything helpful, or to be honest, you could just install it on a PC, try it out with a full keyboard and mouse and write down your findings. I found a picture showing the controls here, so I'm just going to launch the game, set it to auto start, then run the abuse.exe file. Now that I'm in game, I'll press the function and select to bring up the RetroArch menu. First, I'll go into manage remap files and select save game remap file. From now on, the control customization I make will be saved automatically. I do not need to save the file whenever I change the controls. You can always delete or load a remap file or reset your mapping completely from here as well. Anyway, go back to controls, then port one controls. You'll see that the device is currently set to Gravis Gamepad, which was an adorable little DOS gamepad which I kind of think I need to buy now. Anyway, unfortunately this game won't work with the Gravis, it requires a mouse and keyboard. Depending on your game's control layout, you may want to explore these options. Gravis Gamepad is usually ideal for games 
games with gamepad support, because it more or less matches the mini's layout, and was also kind of the king of DOS input back in the day. There's also input methods for flight sticks, full keyboard bindings too, so you want to choose the one that is most applicable to your game. Unfortunately, the custom keyboard plus mouse option doesn't allow us to remap the mouse. Instead, we're going to set the device to mouse with left analog stick. You can already see some of the controls mapped in the list, but they correspond to a handful of generic keyboard keys, and I can see that the D-pad has been mapped to the arrow keys. Let's test these controls as they are. This may have been fixed in the most recent Onion version, but pressing the function button used to bring up the on-screen keyboard. If this happens to you, go back to the RetroArch menu, Controls, Port 1 Controls, and set on-screen keyboard to, say, the Select button instead. This may or may not stop it from popping up with the function button, but it at least makes it easier to dismiss and bring up, which we'll do later. Right off the bat, I already have a little bit of control here. The arrows move the little man and B fires the gun. Since this game uses the mouse to aim, let's set the mouse movement to the face buttons. Back in the control menu, select A and map it to mouse horizontal plus, which is right direction, map Y to mouse horizontal minus, which is left, map B to mouse vertical plus, which is down, and finally X to mouse vertical minus, which is up. All right, let's return to the game and yeah, this is working pretty great actually. I can now run and aim. Now let's go ahead and map the other controls, which are left click, right click, escape, enter, and spacebar. One very important note is that for some reason, the shoulder buttons are kind of messed up in DOSBox on the Mini. Basically, R1 in the menu corresponds to R2 and vice versa, and the same with L1 and L2. So if I want to shoot with L1, I have to set left mouse button to L2 in the menu. This is still an issue with the core at the time of this video's creation, but it was way worse in the previous Onion version, where the shoulders were completely messed up. Alright, I'll set the right mouse button to R2, which is actually R1 on the Mini, and I'll set Start to Escape for the pause menu, and I'll set Spacebar to L1, which is L2. Alright, let's finally give this a go. And we're running, jumping, aiming, and shooting as expected. And wow, this actually works really, really well and is a lot of fun. If you find the mouse too sensitive, you can lower it by going into the RetroArch menu, Options, Input Options, and then change the mouse sensitivity in there. Alright, so now we've covered setting custom controls and emulating mouse input. So what about text entry? Simply, that's where the on-screen keyboard comes in. We mapped it to the Select button before. Here's a text entry screen in another game. I simply press select to bring up the virtual keyboard and type using the mouse cursor. On the virtual keyboard, the mouse is always controlled with the D-pad. If you map the left mouse button, use that to click with the keyboard. Otherwise, it should work with A by default. If you move the mouse cursor to the opposite vertical edge of the screen, the keyboard will move position to stay out of your way. Note that the on-screen cursor here only works with the keyboard, so don't try clicking in-game buttons with it. You'll need to map the mouse like we did before for in-game buttons. All right, so we've learned how to launch a game and how to configure the controls and how to emulate mouse input and keyboard input. Let's look at some advanced settings now and some common troubleshooting tips. Here's a game called, uh, I think it's pronounced Chichit, but it has no audio. I don't want to miss out on this game's absolutely amazing soundtrack. So let's get it working. First, I'm going to open the RetroArch menu and go to Options. Since we're looking at audio, let's go into Audio Options. Now, there are a handful of options in here to play with. Of essential note to us is the Sound Blaster type and the Sound Blaster settings. Here, Sound Blaster 16 is selected as the type, and there are some other settings. You can see that the port is 220, the IRQ is 7, it's an 8-bit DMA1 and a 16-bit DMA5. Now, I'm actually not sure what all of these are, to be honest, and you don't need to know either. Just take a note of what we have selected here. Exit the game and relaunch it, and this time, I'm going to go into setup.bat instead of the exe file. This file allows us to change the game's settings as if we were installing it or setting it up on the real hardware. Now look, there's an option here called select sound card. Let's check that out. Do you remember what we had selected before? It was Sound Blaster 16, so let's choose that here. Now we can choose the port, which is 220, the IRQ, which was 7, and our 8-bit DMA, which was 1, so let's choose that here. As for the quality, I usually choose low because high quality can cause some stuttering and slowdown. Now, I hope you understand what we're doing here. We're matching the game's settings to the ones that were set up in RetroArch already. Of course, you can do this the other way around as well. You can change the settings in the game itself, and then go into RetroArch and change it to match. Alright, looks like that's it, so let's save and play the game. And hey hey, we have audio! Wow, this game has such an amazing soundtrack. It's actually one of those games where it's so kind of unknown, but the soundtrack is just amazing. Anyway, the same process that we just did generally applies to any game you might struggle with, from audio to video to performance issues. In the options menu, there are a ton of different options and customizations you can make to the emulator. Performance options lets you choose various different types and speeds of processor. Video options lets you choose different video modes like EGA, VGA, etc. System lets you change the virtual RAM, CPU, and core. 
and the audio options, which we've just explored, allow us to change the sound driver and other settings. If you change any of these, be sure to go into overrides and choose save game overrides to save your settings. I know that was kind of vague, but like I said before, every DOS game is different. If you find something that doesn't work quite right in your game, you can go into this menu and try tinkering around with it for a start, just like we did with the audio with Chichit. Alright, so that brings me around about to the end of this rather actually extensive video. Remember, every DOS game is different, and it may require its own setup and various different settings. Thankfully though, the DOSBox Pure Core handles most of this for you. I want to recap though the overall process I use for running DOS games. First, add the game to the DOS folder. Open the game, then select the EXE to start it. See how it works with the controls and also with sound and performance and video and all of that. If you need to change the controls, press Function and Select, then go to Controls. Save your remap file for the game and modify the controls as needed. If you need to change game options like we did for Chichip, then go ahead and do that here. Then don't forget to save the game override. Once everything is as you want it, you can exit the game, highlight the EXE file, and then set it to auto start. And alright, that's about me done. I really hope you found this video helpful. It took me a really long time to put together, um, much much frustration, so I really hope it was helpful. If you did enjoy it, I'd be extremely thankful if you could leave a like and a comment on this video. Why not let me know what your favourite DOS game is to play on the Mini? I've been really enjoying SimCity actually, I never knew the original was so, um, old. <laughs> Please also subscribe to my channel, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. There is of course much more Miu Mini content, and even more than that in the works, so ring that bell for notifications. This is Shem from RetroBreeze, and I look forward to seeing you next time.